Welcome to the 46th commencement of the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Family members, trustees, faculty, alumni, and honored guests, today we celebrate the class of 2015, who I predict will provide the leadership needed to move medicine and biomedical science toward a global healthcare system that provides exceptional healthcare not only to all Americans, but to disadvantaged people throughout the globe, and to make fundamental discoveries in the laboratory and in the clinic, resulting in more precise, personalized care, leading to cures of the most serious diseases that plague mankind. This is a tall order. What evidence do we have that the class of 2015 have the strength of character, the creativity, and the indomitable spirit to accomplish these goals. Let me give you some examples. Today's graduates founded the Progressive Health Partnership, a nonprofit that addresses issues of maternal and child health in Uganda. They established new initiatives studying race and racism in medicine and health. They developed the Human Rights and Social Justice Scholars Program that has become part of our culture at Mount Sinai. Organized a research site in Nicaragua to study renal disease in local farmers. As researchers, they identified the therapeutic targets that can promote resilience to stress and conducted groundbreaking research on the most dangerous emerging pathogens, such as Ebola, leading to novel therapeutic insights, and investigated cancer with stem cells, leading to a new model for studying inherited cancer syndromes. Clear, clearly, as a group, the class of 2015's accomplishments are very impressive. But today, with these, my parting words to you, class of 2015, I wish to speak of the work that remains to be done. Graduating physicians, do you have what it takes to become a great doctor? When all treatments have failed, when the disease cannot be conquered, when your patient looks to you in the 11th hour in the world with no answers, what will your answer be? When the pain and suffering of your patient's family because your, becomes your own, will your clarity of thought abandon you? And when the years pass and you become immune to that pain and suffering, Will you have the mental fortitude to overcome this, this natural tendency? And graduating scientist, do you have what it takes to become a great researcher? Will you have the creative intelligence to come up with ideas that no one else has thought of? And when your greatest insights are first ridiculed and then violently opposed, will you stay the course and arrive at that third and final stage that Schopenhauer teaches us that all truths must pass, that of universal acceptance. Let me tell you the story of a patient that illustrates the challenges you will face as physicians and scientists. Josephine Julia Daly was born on September 16, 2014. She was the second child of two loving parents, Meredith and Neil, two sets of doting grandparents, and an army of uncles and cousins eagerly awaiting her arrival. She had a two-year-old sister, Alexandra, who could not wait to have a roommate. Meredith's pregnancy and JoJo's delivery was uneventful. JoJo weighed in at nine pound, one ounce. However, shortly after birth, JoJo developed a respiratory distress syndrome, and after some diagnostic uncertainty, was diagnosed with a very rare form of surfactant deficiency caused by a mutation in the ABCA3 gene, one inherited from each of her parents. It was devastating news. Effective treatment options of this disease are essentially non-existent. Systemic corticosteroids and hydroxychloroquine have limited beneficial effects. Lung transplantation is the only definitive treatment option, but is highly problematic 
in young infants. The majority of infants with severe dysfunction of the ABCA3 gene do not survive beyond three to six months. Everything possible was done to save JoJo's life. Her parents showed incredible resilience, were always by her side loving her. She received exceptional compassionate care by the NICU staff. Her physicians initially tried the standard therapeutic options. None of them worked. They engaged researchers using advanced bioanalytic methods to repurpose approved drugs. Again, it did not work. They contacted pharmaceutical companies to get access to drugs in development to no avail. They refused to give up until the very end. Josephine Julia Daly died on January 6, 2015. She never left the hospital. She had big blue eyes. Her mind was perfect. Her smile was magnetic. Her dad sang songs to her while playing his ukulele each night. She donated her organs to save others. Like a perfect flower that is beyond your reach, gone too soon. She was my granddaughter. As dean, I was able to engage many friends and colleagues to help save JoJo. We knew the gene. We enlisted innovative scientists. We had doctors thinking out of the box. We ran out of time. We could not save her. Class of 2015, why did I tell you our story? For you to make promises. Graduating physicians, promise me you will be the leader your patients and their families need. Guide them through the darkness of their illness toward a meaningful recovery or a dignified death. Promise me you will think outside the box when all else fails. Be prepared to move beyond standard treatment algorithms. Promise me, you will lead the revolution in precision and personalized medicine. You will take advantage of discoveries in genomics, immunology, and molecular biology that will pinpoint specific novel treatments for individual patients. And graduating scientists, promise me you will be bold. Promise me you will challenge convention. Promise me you will take risks and learn from failure. It is not enough to publish papers in top journals and be awarded highly competitive grants. It's just not enough. Your goal needs to be to make discoveries that allow those that die today to live tomorrow. My generation of physicians and scientists have not fulfilled our dreams. We dreamt of that world where each individual had a fair shot to thrive from infancy to old age. Instead, we have a world where in many cases the treatment for that disease is known, but the patient does not have access to it. A world where too many of our patients are still dying from cancer and heart disease and mental illness. A world where many times we know the genes causing disease, but we cannot fix them. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered a sermon, Unfulfilled Dreams, on March 3rd, 1968, a month before he was assassinated. You should read it. In the sermon, Dr. King preached from the eighth chapter of 1 Kings and talked about its, quote, cosmic significance because it says so much in so few words about life. He tells the story of King David whose dream to build a great temple was left unfulfilled. He tells of the shattered dreams of Mahatma Gandhi, whose life of nonviolence also ended with an assassin's bullet. Perhaps Dr. King was reflecting his own fear that he would not see the fulfillment of his own dreams. For Dr. King, the disappointment of shattered dreams was made bearable by, quote, 
a voice crying through the vista of time, saying, it may not come today, or it may not come tomorrow, but it is well within thine heart. It is well that you are trying. You may not see it. The dream may not be fulfilled, but it is good that you had the desire, the intention, to bring it to reality. It is well that it is in, it is in thine heart. Class of 2015, I know it is in your heart and in your mind to pursue great dreams. Stand on the shoulders of our generation so you can turn these promises into reality. Thank you very much.